Nvidia's Pascal might be comparatively ancient, but as graphics architectures go, it's still incredibly relevant. A number of cards from the GTX 10 series, like the 1070, 1080 and their Ti variants, still tick a lot of boxes in terms of price, performance and VRAM capacity. Others, like the various 1030s and 1050s, are now firmly relegated to playing older games, indie titles and the odd modern AAA game, at potato quality of course. That really just leaves one of the 10 series cards with a question mark over its head, and it just happens to be the most popular one. This is the third time I've got my hands on a 6GB GTX 1060. The last time was a loan unit for a review back in 2021, don't watch it, and before that it was a card I owned myself in 2017. Despite the card passing the 2021 benchmarks with flying colours, my lasting impression over the years has been… boredom. The 1060 has never been a secret powerhouse, nor an incredible value, it just kind of exists. Since ex-mining AMD Polaris cards started regularly flooding the market like the Nile, fertilising the banks of the PC tech world with cheap gaming goodness, my personal interest in the similar performing, yet generally more expensive 1060 has been somewhat mummified. Boring it might very well be, but until recently you could still depend on the GTX 1060, especially the 6GB 1280 CUDA core version. However, 2023 has been a bit of a monster of a year for PC gaming, and new titles expect a bit more from your GPU, whether or not they actually reciprocate. Polaris, the 1060's longtime rival from Team Red, has started to struggle with new games, and this might not bode well for the former Steam Hardware Survey Champion 2017 2022. To investigate further, I've paired this sample with my moderately priced gaming PC, featuring a Ryzen 5 5600X and 32 gigs of DDR4 3600. Noted troublemaker The Last of Us is the game which convinced the internet that the days of 8GB GPUs were numbered, so naturally it's an excellent place to start with only 6GB to hand. To my pleasant surprise, the 1060 can actually provide a playable experience, depending on your definition of the term of course. At 1080 medium the game holds a 32fps average with lows in the mid-20s, and because VRAM isn't being taxed at this preset, there are no unfortunate slowdowns when stuff loads in or blows up. You're not likely to see 60fps however, a quick test saw that it was possible to get 40 plus frame rates without harming image quality too much, but even at low settings with FSR performance it still didn't break the 60 mark. Star Wars Jedi Survivor has had its own share of performance woes since its release in April, and while a few patches have been released which seem to have had an impact, this is still one of the most demanding games around. At full 1080 with the medium quality preset, the GPU that was so successful for so many years can't even manage a 30fps average. Adding quality FSR goes a good way to helping, but like many Souls-inspired games, combat is often about timing, and at 45 FPS with softened image quality, it's all too easy to miss incoming attacks. I'm not saying it's unplayable, but I wouldn't recommend it. Resident Evil 4 completes the unoptimised trio. Its initial launch state saw it crashing when the VRAM limit was exceeded, which wasn't very hard to do on an 8GB RTX 3070. A run at the prioritised graphics preset with textures at 1GB, giving an amber warning, actually didn't crash and gave an average of about 50fps. Dropping to balanced while keeping the 1GB texture setting gets rid of the amber warning but doesn't add much to the FPS, only increasing things by about 10%. To get to a rock solid 60 requires the prioritised performance preset. This defaults to using FSR performance which seemed a bit excessive. With no FSR at all I saw an average of 82 with 62 1% lows, so I don't think more than FSR quality is really necessary to guarantee a smooth experience throughout the game. At higher presets, Forza Horizon 5 can present a challenge for 6GB cards, so sticking to high is about as far as I'm comfortable going with the 1060. 
The built-in benchmark completes at about 65 FPS on average, with dips below 60 and closer to 50 at minimum. I'm using TAA, so disabling that could go some way to help maintain a locked V-Sync on a 60Hz display, but dropping to medium is the safest option if you insist on a consistent frame rate. Of course, it should always be reminded that Forza's canned benchmark is far more demanding than open-world gameplay and even many actual races. Halo Infinite has historically not been great on Pascal, seeing far better frame rates at far higher settings on newer Turing, Ampere and RDNA cards. Despite this, the GTX 1060 still beats out the newer GTX 1650 GDDR5 at 1080 low settings. In big team battles it manages over 66 FPS, almost 10% faster than the card which replaced it at the top of the Steam survey, and in smaller scale matches like Team Slayer it should see closer to 80 FPS on average. The 1060 struggles once more in A Plague Tale Requiem, which in fairness is one of the more demanding games of the last year. At 1080 medium, with resolution optimizer at its default ultra setting, the game struggles to stay above 30 FPS all of the time. While we're not talking about a first person shooter, it's still a less appealing experience to play at slower frame rates. If you are aiming for a 60 plus experience, it's not impossible with a GTX 1060, but it does take some more heavy handed reductions. I found that leaving the preset on medium but dropping resolution optimizer to performance was sufficient for a 60 average, though naturally image quality takes something of a hit. God of War is a little more in this card's wheelhouse than many of the more recent console ports. Without the use of upscaling or dropping to low settings, the GTX 1060 isn't quite able to deliver a 1080 60fps experience, but it's pretty close. Averages edge past 56fps and lows just past 46. You can probably learn to live with this, but if you'd rather enjoy a 60 plus experience, you can always add some quality FSR too, with the usual caveats regarding image softness. Spider-Man actually doesn't require upscaling to reach a 60 average. 1080 high is more than sufficient to reach 61 FPS, though lows are a less impressive 32. This is, in my experience, par for the course in this title, so unfortunately you won't be getting a locked 60 without serious compromise. However, if you'd like a small bump in settings at the cost of a little bit of sharpness, very high with FSR quality lifts averages to 68.5. Uncharted's results are remarkably similar to those of God of War. Again, at 1080 medium, the game can pull out an average score of 56 FPS, with 1% in the low to mid 40s. I'd argue that this game maybe doesn't look quite as good at medium as that other title does at original, however, so you might consider pushing quality up to high and adding FSR quality, which brings a small bump up to 60 FPS on average and benefits from higher quality assets to boot. Asses to boot and benefits from higher quality assets in the process. Given the imminent release of Cyberpunk 2077's first major add-on, Phantom Liberty, it could be that this data is going to age like fine milk. Among other changes, the new update will bring with it higher system requirements and that doesn't bode well for the GTX 1060. Right now, 1080 medium can only manage to deliver 36 FPS on average, and lows dip ever so slightly below 30. Performance FSR can bring that up to 60 FPS, for now, at the expense of some image quality as you'd expect, but I wouldn't expect this state of affairs to last for long. In DX12, with its next-gen update, The Witcher 3 can still surprise. The GTX 1060 might not perform as well as it does on the unpatched version of the game, but it can still manage to provide playable frame rates for those looking to enjoy some of the improved visuals. 
At 1080 high, it's possible to obtain a 62 FPS average, even walking through Novigrad, though I would point out that this game is pretty CPU intensive and any older quad-core CPUs and even first-gen Ryzen's might find themselves holding back the GPU here. If you prefer higher visual fidelity and don't mind sacrificing a smooth frame rate to get it, the Ultra preset can still perform at 52 FPS on average with lows of 36. Fortnite has just received a game update that changes the map and much of the scenery, so these numbers aren't necessarily to be compared with other GPUs I've tested in the past. As usual, I test at three performance levels, starting with the so-called competitive settings. This just fails to meet the target frame rate for pairing with a 144Hz monitor, so would require either turning the resolution scaling back on or rebooting the game into performance mode if that was your goal. Turning up to medium looks somewhat prettier without sacrificing too much in the way of performance. Averages are now in the middle 90s and lows stay just above the 60 mark. If you're familiar with Epic's Unreal Engine 5, you might be aware that it has two highlight features, Lumen and Nanite, both of which are enabled at the high preset. These settings are a little too much for the GTX 1060 to handle. Even with TSR quality upscaling, the game only manages a 36 FPS average and dips below 30 are frequent. I'm not 100% sure why, but the GTX 1060 far underperforms the GTX 1650 in Warzone 2. Granted, it's been a few months since I tested that entry-level Turing card, but it managed over 20 FPS higher than the 1060 does at the same settings. At 1080 Basic, this card can only manage about 50 FPS, with lows in the 30s. I didn't bother adding FSR to the 1650 tests as it didn't seem to merit it, but in this case I enabled FSR quality to get close to a 65 FPS average. Lows were still in the 30s though, and I have to say this is a pretty disappointing end to the benchmarks. The GTX 1060 6GB was a stalwart of PC gaming for long enough that I don't think any original owners can claim to be disappointed in it. If you've held on to one for the last 7 years, you've gotten a lot of value out of it. Alas, moving into the post-PS5 era, demands have gone up and developers' answer to PC optimization seems to be to lean heavily on upscaling tech. I'm not saying the 1060 can't game, it clearly can, and if your gaming aspirations don't extend far into the modern era, or if you're happy with competitive multiplayer titles like Fortnite, Rocket League and Valorant, then one of these could be a well-priced option for those disappointed by the lower cost options on the new market, but for everyone else, I think it's time to consider an upgrade. If you're looking for a recommendation, one of my other recent test videos is on screen now. Thanks for watching, kindly do the usual YouTube things if you feel so inclined, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>